Hey guys, welcome to another Lispy episode. Today I am going to review Jennifer Castle's Together at Midnight, which I read on my Kindle. It's super fun to read because my librarian friend Karina, who is the librarian at Jaime Escalante Middle School in Far, Texas, and I read it together. So I bought her the hardcover and she bought me the Kindle Kindle version and we got to read it together and we discussed it. And it's been so much fun to do. We had our own little book club. It was super cool. Definitely recommend doing that with your friends. Like if y'all find the same book that you like, buy it for each other and read it together. It's super fun. So it has just started snowing here in Austin. As you can see, I am dressed for the cold and I think it's really fitting because I just finished this where the biggest part of the book happens during a blizzard in New York. So it was really, really cool because I was reading about a blizzard while we are sort of expecting one. So the book is called Together at Midnight and it is titled that because the main character, Kendall, is writing her own book called Together at Midnight, which is very meta, very cool. Um, but it doesn't play like a huge part of the story where her story overpowers the rest of the story. So Kendall just came back from Europe and she's in this weird in-between period where she doesn't know like how she feels about going back to high school, but she's also in that weird in-between period between Christmas and New Year's where you don't know what day it is. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Like you don't really have any responsibilities. And so she's got this crazy idea that the day after Christmas, she is going to New York with her brother. Just that's it. She's already still packed from Europe. She doesn't have to unpack and repack and do any of that. So she just takes her suitcase and leaves with him. And while she's in New York, she starts talking or she's been talking to this guy named Jamie. And all they do is send pictures back and forth to each other. And so her goal is to obviously start a relationship with him. And so she goes to New York and she tells him, hey, let's have New Year's together in New York. And so Jamie's like, yeah, okay. But in the meantime, like, I want to go visit you for like a day. And so he does. And so Kendall learns a little more about Jamie's background, but she also meets his friend, Max, who she had a run in about last summer or last summer in the book. And it didn't really end well for them. So she's already decided in her head, like she doesn't really think much. She doesn't really want to be friends with Max. And she doesn't really want anything to come of a friendship with him, but she does want something with Jamie. So as the story goes on, you learn that there's a lot more to Jamie. He is dealing with an ex that he's been really attached to because he helps her through a lot of emotional stuff. And now they have to figure out how they're going to move on from that. And while the three of them are in New York together, they witness this bus accident where they see a girl get hit by a bus and they're traumatized from it. Um, and so Jamie goes home back to where he's from and Kendall is left with Max. And this kind of brings them together. So the next day after the bus accident, they have coffee together and they're both just really quiet. And you can tell they're really shaken up. And this waitress comes up to them and she dares them to do seven random acts of kindness to people throughout New York City. And that's where the rest of the book happens. And it's so, so cool. I loved it because they're very genuine acts of kindness. They're not things that they like pre-plan. It's like, oh, they see someone who needs help. And they try and do whatever they can to help them. But the cool part is that after they help that person, you get a really short vignette about that person and how they were affected by Max and Kendall's act of kindness. So one of them is a little kid who just needed some help, um, I think lighting a candle. And then one of them is an older, um, an older lady who they offer help, but she doesn't want it. And then another one is a couple who just needs help shoveling snow off of their um, stoop in front of their house. So everybody has something different that they need help with. And they're very genuinely helped by Max and Kendall. And it's so cute to hear, to read that reaction afterwards. Because some people, you know, they're not really grateful for help and they don't want the help. And so you get to understand their side of the story. And what I really liked was how each character in the story, Max, Kendall, Jamie, Eliza, who is Jamie's ex um, Big E, who's Max's grandpa, they, excuse me, they each get their own voice throughout the story. So nothing is one-sided. You hear everyone's side of their story. Um, and what keeps Max in New York while, while, excuse me, Kendall stays to get away from things, Max is kind of forced to stay because nobody wants to take care of his grandfather anymore. And so while he's in between caretakers, his family is like, oh, hey, Max, you're not doing anything. You stay here and take care of your grandpa, who they call Big E. And Big E is very grouchy. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. He spends most of his days in his chair watching TV and he doesn't want to leave his apartment. 
And so Max, this whole time has been thinking like, oh yeah, I just agree with everything he says and like keep him quiet and let the TV go on for him. But what we learn is that Big E doesn't want that. Big E wants to be challenged and talk to and have conversations. And so Max has to figure that out. And it's a really nice story about how their dynamic changes. Um, anyway, so while Max and Kendall are doing these seven big acts of seven random acts of kindness, there is a blizzard and it's huge. Like I couldn't even imagine how crazy this blizzard is. And so they get stuck together overnight. And this is when you find there might be something between Max and Kendall. And it was really like interesting to watch how they go from like, no, no, we don't want anything with each other to like, oh, maybe there could be something to no, no, no. Again, it's so cute. Very typical teen romance, but it never overpowered the actual story of the seven random acts of kindness. And so, of course, as we get closer to New Year's, there's a time limit to all of these romances that are going on. And you so so you you read about Jamie and how he's still very much attached to Eliza, his ex. And so the two of them come into town and then two other people come into town. And then Max and Kendall have New Year's, all, all of them have New Year's Eve together. And at midnight, a choice has to be made for everyone. So Eliza has to figure out what she's going to do with herself. Jamie has to figure out, like, does he really want to keep helping Eliza or does he want to go off and have his own life away from her? Max and Kendall. Is Max going to stick around and take care of his grandpa or is he going to go off and use a, um, a reason to fly to Seattle and go help with someone's engineering firm? I think it's an engineering firm, but it, he can have an internship somewhere that's not in New York and he can do something. And is Kendall going to stay in New York with her brother like she wants to or is she going to face her fear of going back to high school and finish that off? And there's also, are they going to get together or not? It was so cute. I loved it. Very much reminded me of Nicola Yoon's The Sun is Also a Star, but because you get to see everybody's side of their own story. And there's so much more going on at the same time. And so it was really, really, really fun to read. Um, <coughs> I really liked that the romances that are going on are always given... <coughs> excuse me, an opportunity to like blossom. But at the same time, the characters have to make their own decisions and it's never unrealistic. And it, there's never a point where you're like, oh God, he's going to make the same mistake over and over again. No, the characters are actually very um, relatable and you can understand their struggle and you really get to see how they make that choice. And even if it's a hard choice, they make the choice that is right for them. And that's what I really liked about it. So to go read it together at midnight by Jennifer Castle. She did an amazing job with this with this book. Um, it did not take long to read. It was really fun to read. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna go enjoy this now. Have a great day.